year has been the biggest, as in by acceptance and okay. by popularity. But uh, I, I don't think it's, it's my biggest composition. I composed Oye in 2009 in Atlanta, Georgia. So Oye is 10 years. I was also trying to relocate. Oh, I see. Uh, find greener pastures. I, I couldn't survive. Not because there were no jobs, or I couldn't meet what I went there to do. But I was so much into the music, and I was thinking about what was going to happen in Ghana. And that was around the time I was Which only means God is good. God is good. James Varik Lamar is currently the latest and youngest music gem to be produced by this town. Uh, my name is James Varik Kofi Lamar. Okay, we didn't know that. Yes, and um, I am from Winneba, the Windy Bay City. Yeah. I was born, uh, bred, Batted here in Winneba. Sugar. Uh, sugar, pampered in Winneba. So I am a native of the great Winneba city. And uh, Jim Varikama is a simple musician, a choral, classical musician. Unlike many of his contemporaries who are not sure of what careers to pursue, James was certain that music was going to be a major part of his life in the future. In fact, whenever we went to church, See the musicians perform, got closer. I was just trying to see what they were doing. I love music, music was my soul. And uh, to give you some insight into the past, I remember in uh, primary school, I used to draw the piano not so well on my, on my table okay. and try to play. Try to play <laughs> on the table. <laughs> <laughs> and then, not just that, we come home. Especially on Sundays that we do not have the opportunity to go to church. There were some days we were not able to go to church. We tried to have our own service at home. At home. Children's service. And then uh, my big brother will wear something like a choir master. Mm -hmm. I, will, I will sit by the wall okay. as the organist mm -hmm. and uh, we will try to do something. do something, mimic what they do at church. After playing the role of a school organist for three years and subsequently choir master for the school, James applied to study fine arts with a combination of music and theatre arts at the University of Ghana. Once I accepted to do music at the university, I knew I wanted to do music full time. But no, when I was in secondary school, really I wanted to be an economist or a land, land economist. In fact, I wanted to go to the K and UST okay. to study something. Land like. economy. Seriously. But then I was also playing for the Winneba Youth I started playing for the Winneba Youth Choir when I was in second year high school. And uh, I don't know what happened. After secondary school, I didn't have any interest in all those things. Music was my life. I was practicing playing music every day. And if you ask me how I entered the University of Ghana, I wouldn't be able to tell you. I just saw myself there. As fate would have it, he met Professor Ken Kafui at the music department. However, their first encounter was outside the classroom. I took notice of this young man when he was in the Winnibar Youth Choir. Something happened. The, there was a performance and the organist of the choir, I think he was in Tema, he did not report for the program and he stopped. Then a young boy, tiny boy called Varik, took over, came. He was now learning to play organ. And the way he accompanied the Hallelujah Cross, also that's where he, he, he taught me. My love for him, oh, wonderful. And then he came to Legon here. And he started writing music. And uh, James is just wonderful. Besides that, Varik in music is good. He composes very good works. They are also Varik and uh, um, New Love, Annan. They are also following the Amos thing, but varying it with Western styles, which is also very unique and interesting. So, uh, Varik Ama is someone Ganot cannot. Ghana cannot play with or take for granted. Through my interaction with these musicians, one thing is clear. They always looked within for strength 
to pursue their heartbeat. Professor Ken Kafui shares with us the frustrations he's endured over the years, including being denied opportunities to either perform or further his education in music outside the country. And uh, President Gorbachev asked me to address the Congress on behalf of Africa. After this uh, uh, meeting, the British composer, Nigel, Professor Nigel Osborne, called me, young man, what are you doing here? And I said, uh, I'm a composer. He said, do you know what composition is? I said, yes, I'm a composer like you. Then he said, uh, do you mean you can drum and dance? I said, no, composition. I've written a symphony, I have sonatas. I have choral me works with uh, orchestra. Then he looked at me and said, um, how can I believe this? So he gave me three days to meet him and show him my works. So I took my work to him. He looked at them, my scores. Then he said, young man, did you write these things yourself? I said, yes. So I started analyzing the works. Then he said, please, wait a minute. Draw closer to me. Young man, can you confide in me? I will not tell anybody. Are you not an American here? I said, no, I'm a Ghanaian. I studied my music all through up in Ghana. I never stepped in the US. Then he said, then why are you wasting your time in Ghana? So he was taking me away to Nottingham University to teach composition with him. He was a professor there. But I told him, if I leave my country, who will teach what, the, what I know? But in my country, I suffered a lot. When I am thinking, of contributing my quota to my country. I don't know whether it was a punishment. Any time I had a scholarship, when the time came for me to go, they said, Ghana government said, uh, Ministry of is it Finance, where it has to go through to be approved. They said, music is not their priority. The many countries, so I had to struggle to become what I am. Professor Sechibedu also sings from the same handbook on this matter. It takes so much of time to put a choir together to rehearse. One anthem that is sung six minutes would have taken, say, 10 hours to of, do. Of rehearsal. Yes, of rehearsal to do. Mm -hmm. Take away the time that the organist will also have to go somewhere and practice. Mm -hmm. And it's sung for only six minutes. And people value it for the six minutes that it, has, uh, it was performed, not for the efforts that were put in place um, to get it performed. Not even mentioning the composer who put the things together and the hours that he spent. People don't care about it. So as a composer, I've never gotten one CD for being a composer. Not easily. Um, people don't care about it. Even the churches don't care about you being a composer. They care about you uh, playing for them to hear, quite, quite utilitarian. Play for them to hear, that's all. Uh, even the, sing, the song teacher, the church doesn't care about him because he doesn't teach them. The church, church only cares about the one who plays for them to hear. The one who teaches for them to sing, to, for them to hear, um, he, the church doesn't care about them. It's an organist, because he plays into their ears directly. One such attitudes um, are what we use for choral music. We can't grow. And so what's, what's the motivation for you? I'm saying, oh my God. But the young touch bearer, James, would not give up. I think I was so motivated by myself. And uh, I also thought that we could make a difference. Because I believe that every profession in the world has gone through such experiences. I mean, we did not start having professional lawyers, um, being paid and stuff in their early days. It started from somewhere professional. Have you been disappointed? I am not disappointed. I sometimes sometimes get saddened by some activities around and things that happen in this uh, music environment, but I am never disappointed. A few years down the line, he will form his own group, which will later grow to become Ghana's most sensational choral group, the Harmonious Choral.
For Professor Sechibedu, the simplicity in James's composition is what does the magic. Oh, James is a fantastic person. He has some skills that um, some of us struggle to have, simplicity. He has a natural simplicity that some of us, uh, maybe because of the things that they're doing, have thrown us into complexity in a way. And you have to struggle to come down to be, to be simple. He has a natural simplicity. But he speaks simple. He's of the age. This is not my age. Uh, he is the man of the age. And he understands that he can't work alone. So he gets people of that age with him who also understand different aspects of, of that age. And together uh, with his organist, um, uh, Augustine and Kwame and um, the others, you know, and the trumpeters and others together, they make such a beautiful uh, um, company. Choral music in Ghana has one moderator. And died 241 years ago in 1778. What can we say about Charles Wesley? He was an English leader of the Methodist movement. Reverend Dr. Joyce Ayi is one of the few who have been at the forefront of championing the cause of choral music even from her student days. Joyce Ayi knew music from Achimota. A festival of nine lessons and carols started in Achimota school before Ghanaians started copying. 1964, when Joyce Ayi was girls prefect and they were the first group, President Rawlings was in Agri Chapel Choir. When music was stopped in schools, music was dying out. But the activities of Joyce I has brought back music. But now in Ghana, when Harmonious Choral is going to perform, you see a lot of people, even from outside, rushing to, to listen to the choir. Dr. Ayi continues to support the music with a radio show every Sunday afternoon called Hymns and Their Meanings. When reading this psalm, let us consider what may have been in Christ's mind when he sang it for the last time. The resident choir is James's harmonious choral, of which she is the executive director. Uh, I knew James uh, in the Winneba Youth Choir. He was their organist, you know. Then, then he went to the university, and then he came to me uh, and showed me a CD he had done with a quartet. It's called Holy, Holy, Holy. You know, he took some hymns and rearranged them. It was beautiful. And then he said, you know, he felt that he should expand it into a choir. He had nowhere. Uh, to meet for rehearsals and so I said, oh, come, my home is available. Then the choir started, uh, small, 10, 15, then it grew. For many years, the rehearsals were even held in my living room. First we had a gazebo, you know, then moved into my living room. It's only about a year and a half ago where they became so huge that my living room was no longer big enough. And then they moved out, you know. You know, it has been a privilege to be a part of James's ministry. And for me, uh, being the executive chairman and the mother has been good because it has also fitted uh, my own interest in, in choral music. As executive director of the choir, James says Auntie Joyce, or Mami, as she's fondly referred to, has played a major role in bringing the choir to prominence. She was one person I saw had interest in musicians, keen interest in musicians. At uh, first I thought, oh, all these big people, they don't care about, um, they love music. When you play, it's fine. But she was one person who had interest in who is performing, who is singing, who, and uh, so she became my mother. And uh, it's just been immeasurable. I mean, she's been awesome. She's been a mother. She spent a lot on us personally on me mm -hmm. and the choir itself. In fact, if we had three or two of a kind, I'm sure 
Ghana Chora music will go places. Good evening, and around this time, there's only one place you can find James and the Harmonious Chorale. It takes a lot of sacrifice, commitment. Um, you are working with people. Yeah. If you just take it from the point of music, it, normally you rehearse in the evenings. People yeah. go from work, I mean, they come to rehearse from work and yeah. other activities. Yeah. You need to, first and foremost, manage their stress level, mm -hmm. everything they've gone through in the day. Mm -hmm. They need to find happiness, joy mm -hmm. in singing. Yeah. So it takes more than the singing itself. But I can tell you that my people are very committed. They love what they do, they love the music. And um, uh, as you can see, when they come here, they put everything aside and want the best for uh, the preparation. They only think about the end. The end is their goal. Mm -hmm. The choir holds at least four major concerts in the year, beside the dozens of invitations to perform both locally and internationally. For such major concerts, the voice is not all there is in putting up a good show. The instruments, the stage, the light and sound quality plays a role. Okay, um, the microphone in the middle, yes, right ahead of you. Okay, fine. Um, microphone at the. However, everything costs money. But how much? We went to the World Choir Olympics last year, the 10th edition of the World Choir Olympics in South Africa. Mm -hmm. It was the first time a Ghanaian choir represented that. Uh, that is the biggest Kora event mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. we, went f we won four gold awards. We spent over 80 US thousand dollars to go for that event. I see. With no major sponsorship. All the events we do here in Ghana, none costs less than a hundred thousand. It is a lot. When you see you you still need it is it's a specialized kind of music. You need special people to support. From the humble beginning 11 years ago, Harmonious Choral has fast risen to become a national asset representing Ghana on the global stage. At their first participation in the World Choir Games in South Africa, the group emerged champions winning four gold medals. <laughs> won the hearts of their audience and the judges with their typically captivating performances characterized by dance and illustrations. Clearly, the choir projected Ghana. They presented to the world what was unique and authentically Ghanaian. My favorite performance was this popular Ghanaian folktale packaged and performed in choral strings. US, for instance, the sheet music industry is worth about $1 billion. 
In South Africa, it breaks millions for the economy and creates jobs. Michael Dinga is a South African conductor. Choral music in South Africa is a lifestyle. It's a way of living. We grew up singing hymns in church, at schools. Uh, we've got uh, over 24,000 schools, public schools. There's the South African schools, choral music I stand for. There's music all over. And um, there's different types of music, of course, hip hop and all that. But the foundation of all music is indigenous music and choral music. And that is the root on which everybody bases the music. And yeah, it is a very powerful industry. It has created a very prosperous people in life. So it's not an industry to run away from and think uh, the employability in that field does not guarantee you a great future. So what is the potential of choral music and how can it be explored for national development? Professor Sechibedu says to begin with, musicians must come together. I propose that musicians should sit down and think. And that's the worry that I have. Musicians don't sit down, they don't think together. It's one, um, one disappointing thing. The carpenters have come together to form unions. Mm -hmm. And the hairdressers do so. Mm -hmm. The tailors, dressmakers, they do so. And the current musicians haven't. Mm How -hmm. are we competing um, to go? We are competing to serve God and to sing Korean music. Can't we sit down, therefore, and think about what we want to do and how we can share things, how we can come together and create things so that we can, we, we can perform the best? That is the answer. The church is the lead, leading uh, consumer of choral music in Ghana. And so what we have planned in Methodist Church, I brought a proposal what the church has taken um, up so seriously, is to do a new hymn book. We have the MHB inherited from um, UK, done there in 1933. What we're doing now is to have an indigenous Methodist hymn book. Dr. Joyce Ai believes the state led by the ministry in charge of creative arts must lead the charge. I'm expecting that uh, even our Ministry of Culture would appreciate the value of choral music since when people come into choirs, they learn things like discipline, they learn things like teamwork, they learn things like humility and so on. If we're going to be intentional about building a good society, then we need to be deliberate about promoting these things in primary schools, in middle schools, in, JHS, in second cycle schools, at the universities. For many of Ghana's skillful musicians or composers, perhaps just like their counterparts in the movie industry, they are hardly rewarded or acknowledged for their work or contribution. But the harmonious chorale led by James has started a program that celebrates these composers. Thoughts and Light Ministry, led by Dr. Reverend Dr. Joyce Ayi mm -hmm. and myself, the Harmonious Chorale, started a program, and an evening with composers. Mm -hmm. We started in 2008. The first edition was with Professor J.Y. Sechibedu. What we were doing on such nights was to put together um, known very known compositions, or um, some unknown, or um, very beautiful stuff we put together, and then perform in a concert. We record it, and then put it on YouTube as well, and everywhere, just promoting the works of Ghanaian composers. And a lot of people come to see that, oh, this man wrote this song, he did this. A lot of people didn't know, proud to that. I want to do a special introduction of the composer of this music we just rendered. Um, he is an 86 year old man. He has composed many beautiful music. We know a few of his music. It's like 
He's a composer of that hymn. And um, he's here in person. We have Mr. J.W. Say. Whilst James believes a multifaceted approach must be adapted, his resolve to contribute as quota to the growth of the genre is unflinching. For the South African genius, the ministry of James and the Harmonious Chorale will for generations to come be the reference point when the story is told of how indigenous choral music was turned around. It is delightful, it is wonderful. Uh, the tapestry of music, the number of organists you find here, uh, it is just phenomenal. I, I think it is one of the richest cultural heritage on this continent. They are ahead of their times. They are setting a tone for the next generation. It's a standard that's not going to be beaten anytime soon. And it's a standard to be proud of. African-American author, philosopher and theologian, Hall Thurman once said, don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. James and the Harmonious Choral have come alive through choral music in all its variety. But if this rich Ghanaian rhythm will be kept alive, then you and I must be ready to give it the necessary support. Oh,